Hello everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I am Mitch and today I am here in the studio with my my uh, little papa. Well, she's a big little papa. She's a great Dane. Um, my partner's just had back surgery. So for those of you that met Trent at Porcon, he had his back surgery today. Um, so he should be up and walking in the next couple of hours, which is fantastic and free of pain, I hope. Uh, so I've got my dog in here because she's got severe separation anxiety at the moment. So if she starts barking, I apologize because it is quite a loud bark. Um, but today we are going to experiment with cloud pours. So I have several different pouring mediums that I want to try today. And I'm really, really excited to do so. So uh, I've had a couple of ideas of what we could use for cloud, uh, cloud pour mix here in Australia. And I've got some options. So I did have some American flow troll that Billy sent me a while ago. Um, and of course I have Australian flow troll. Um, and from America, I managed to get some satin enamels and Vallejo pearl medium. So that's this one and this one. So these are the ones that you would normally use for a cloud pour, okay? Now I am using Tiffany Bergeron from Willy B Studios recipes. Um, and the other medium that she has used and has said works is Liquitex iridescent medium. So we can get this here in Australia. Okay, so if you can't get those other two, you can get away with the Liquitex iridescent medium. Um, and I'm going to try that out. So I've already tried the satin enamels and I've done that with Australian flow troll and US flow troll. And these are the results. So this is the one with US flow troll and you can see it dries beautifully. And this is the one with Australian flow troll. So you do get a very, very different effect. The Australian flow troll gives these beautiful salacious cells on the outside. Um, and you definitely get a lot more lacing towards the edge. You can see up here, there's some beautiful lacing that we know that comes from Australian flow troll. So I can't wait to resin these, um, even though they've got lumps and bumps and they're not perfect, because you can see all of that beautiful deco art satin, um, extreme sheen, 24 karat gold in the lines in between the other colors. So it is a very transparent paint and not very pigmented, I've come to find. Um, and of course, we've got the beautiful hoity-toity piggy in there and egotistical in this one. So again, they'll shine a lot more once they are resined. And we're going to talk about the other paints that I'm going to be using today. So I had the thought of um, what, what makes the clouds so puffy and do the thing that clouds do. Um, and the thought that I had was um, that when we started with blooms, people were experimenting with flat based house paint and it was eating all of their paints. So I happen to have some flat ceiling paint from when I painted the cafe and I've mixed that with some Australian flow just to get the consistency right and a little bit of Amsterdam titanium white. So I'm going to experiment with that as a cloud mix. I'm also going to experiment with just straight up pillow paint from the Shelley Art Bloom Technique. So this is the British Paints Low Sheen Interior in White. So just what us Australians would use as a normal pillow. I also have here, oh, I can't tilt the can too much, I'll show you at the end. Uh, British Paints H2O Enamel Water-Based Semi-Gloss in White. And this is a perfect texture straight out of the tin. We want a two second trace and that's pretty much what we've got here. I have a Dulux sample pot. This is also from Bunnings. This is in Vivid White. And I've added just a little bit of water to this just to thin it down to the right consistency because it was incredibly thick. I don't know if this is a gloss based paint. I don't know what it is. It just says Vivid White. Comes in the sample pot like this. So I'm gonna give that a go. And the other one, which is gonna be like a sort of last minute attempt is White Knight Rust Guard Epoxy Enamel. Now this stinks to high heavens. Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna go, um, but it is quite thin. So I will need to mix it with some titanium white. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna grab some pouring cups so I can pour my cloud mix into them. Now, uh, I'm gonna be using tiny little cups because I'm only going to be pouring on four inch tiles today. Because I'm experimenting, I don't wanna burn through too much paint. So, Let's start with our mixtures. So into this cup here, I've already mixed in my baby cups. Um, I already have some paints mixed up with US Floetrol and Australian Floetrol. So what I'm going to do first is attempt all of these with, um, so the US mix with uh, US Floetrol, and then I'm going to attempt the Australian version as well. 
So for example, I have Vallejo Pearl Medium with Australian Flow Troll, and then I'm going to use the Australian Flow Troll mixed paints with that to see what, what sort of reaction we get. And it seems that I have a container here that has cracked and is leaking. This is not ideal because I need all that paint. How rude. Okay. So this pink one has sprung a leak somehow. Um, that's not fun, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so the first one on my little tray on the side here is the Liquitex Medium with Australian Flow Troll. So we're going to mix up the Liquitex with Australian Flow Troll Cloud Mix, and I'm only going to pull back the cling wrap just as far as I need to get inside to the Cloud Mix. And I'm just going to use disposable sticks today because I couldn't be bothered cleaning anything. Um, I am sick. I've had, I think I've got COVID. You know, yay! I incubated for a while and sort of dodged it and now it's come back. So, let's give this a go. Probably pouring when I'm sick isn't the best option, but I really want to do this experiment. So I'm just going to wipe this off. And let's pour in some, uh, whoops, we don't want to do cloud mix first, we want to do one of our paints. So because I want a nice sparkly centre, I'm going to use, uh, this one is Pebio Iridescent Red Blue. So whatever colour you layer at the bottom is the one you're going to see most in the middle. Then I want to use, this one is um, Matisse Australian Red Violet. Really, really pretty. Then I'm going to do my cloud mix. So this one is the Liquitex with Australian Flow Troll. And then I'm going to finish that off with Matisse Deep Rose Matter. So the Deep Rose Matter is likely to get spun off at the end, but that is okay. So now I have a feeling I've got way too much paint on here, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, now we want to pour out the same hole that we poured into. So we wanted to pour everything down the side. So let's see what we get. So there's definitely way too much paint in here. So I know for next time I can go easy on the paint and definitely don't need to fill up one of these cups. So the joy of the cloud pour technique is that you often don't see the clouds until you start to spin and stretch everything out. Um, I also didn't put down a flood coat or a pillow for this. I don't know if that was a mistake or if that's gonna help us here. So I've got what I would say is a lovely ring pour, but we don't have clouds. So let's give this a spin and see what we get. Now I'm going to grab my cup and scraper. So I think I need to put with them, when I'm doing the smaller ones, I need to put the medium, the cloud mix closer to the base. So maybe the second one in, uh, so I can actually get clouds in the center. I mean, this is a cool little piece, <clears throat> but we don't have any clouds. So this was the Liquitex medium with Australian Flow Troll. 
the Liquitex iridescent medium, I should say. It's really quite cool. I do like this, but not what we're after. Uh, so let's sit this one aside to dry. Let's see if that develops. So Liquitex medium with Australian Floetrol. Right, next one on the list is uh, Vallejo Pearl Medium with Australian Floetrol. And we're gonna do that one next. So let's put that up here. So I'm expecting this one to give us at least some results. Because this is the one Tiffany loves. So let's do the exact same order. We'll do the Pevio Red Blue. Let's do the Cloud Mix next and I'm going to do less of the Cloud Mix this time. Then let's do the Australian Red Violet. Oh, there was a chunk in there. I don't want you get out okay that's the Australian red violet and the deep rose matter okay so let's see how this goes <clears throat> we're gonna get nice and close and pour very very slowly So I'm starting to think that maybe this technique doesn't work so good on a small scale. Maybe this works better on a larger scale because it looks like that white is just taking over. Now that could just be me adding way too much paint. But let's see. So I'm gonna use the leftover mixture from the other one just as a flow extender. And let's give this a spin. I'm just gonna help it flow out. So let's see if we get those beautiful wispy clouds. So this is Tiffany's preferred recipe, except I've swapped out the Australian flow troll for the American flow troll in here. One of these paints clearly has bubbles in it. I don't know which one that is. I think it's the uh, Southern Ocean Blue. Oh, sorry, not Southern Ocean Blue. Australian Red Violet. I may have called this Southern, th Southern Ocean Blue before as well, and it's not Southern Ocean Blue at all. It's Australian Red Violet. It's an interesting look, but it's definitely not cloudy at all. I do have lots of bubbles, so maybe I'm not going to use the Australian Red Violet. It's just too bubbly. Okay, so this is Australian Flow Troll and Vallejo Pearl Medium. Um, so I don't have 
those clouds, I don't think. It so sort of looks like that in the center. Um, but we'll see how this dries. We'll see how things develop. Okay, let's do the next one. So the next one will be the US Flow Troll and Liquitex mix. So this one would be an American recipe that you should be able to re readily get over in the States. Now this mixture does have bubbles. I would love to get a vacuum chamber so I could never have this problem again, but I don't have one. So let's grab a new cup. Let's go with the Pebio. What am I doing with this? Yeah, this is the Australian one. Okay, so Liquitex and US Flow. Right, so for this one, I'm gonna use the USA products. So I have some colors mixed up here. I've got some, this little piggy or stuck up piggy egotistical, which I want in the middle. I have Triart Dioxazine Violet. Oops, here I am mixing them up off screen in a different cup. Uh, so Egotistical, Dioxazine Violet Triart. This is the US Flow Troll and Liquitex Medium. I'm not going to go too heavy handed on it. And then I have Triart's Quilla Violet. And then maybe just a tad more Diox Violet at the end, just so we've got enough paint on there. Maybe one more thing of cloud mix. Just under a quarter of a cup seems to be right for this. So let's tip it out, see how we go. Cool. So this one looks like it worked much better, but still too much cloud mix. I'm gonna pop the bubbles now. Let's give her a spin. So this is Liquitex medium with US flow troll. And we've definitely got that clouding effect happening, which is super pretty. Just trying to move the paint weight so we don't get a melty center. There are some beautiful colors here. I do hope that the clouds develop and allow some of that color underneath to come through. I think that's pretty good. So this was the Liquitex with the US Flow Troll. I quite like that. That's the closest one to a cloud yet. So. The next one is the US uh, Flow Troll with Vallejo Pearl Medium. So again, Tiffany's preferred mixture. Let's give this a go. Now I did mix these paints up a couple of days ago and let them sit. So let's do the same color scheme. We've got Egotistical. We've got Dioxazine Violet. And I'm gonna put less Cloud Mix in. That's about it. 
So Tiff says to do equal amounts of cloud mix to paint colors in your layers. I'm gonna do less because I'm going smaller. Then this one is the Quilla Violet. And for this one, I'm also going to add the Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold, which I also have mixed up. Just a little bit, we'll see if that gives a different effect for us. So again, nice and low, nice and slow, let's go. Now if you notice as I'm pouring, I am helping it so that I don't get massive blobs of cloud mix or anything. I do like those striations. Sometimes you just don't get them. So I'm making them myself. Now the trick is not to go too high because what will happen is you start getting squiggly lines. They st the um, trail starts to curl over on itself. So if you do it this way, stay nice and low, nice and close the trail is going to stay nice and straight, nice and aligned. So I can already see why this is Tiffany's favorite mixture because the clouds have started to melt on the edges or not melt, but they're um, taking on the color of the paint around it and it already looks super soft and pillowy. Now I don't know where the bubbles are coming from because these have sat for a couple of days at least. So a vacuum chamber would definitely make this a lot better and easier. So let's spin this out. As always, I'm just moving the center of weight away from the middle of the pour so that it will spread out evenly. And then once I've got that distributed, I can sort of shift the weight back a little bit. And that way we're not gonna end up with a mound of paint in the middle. Now I am just scraping all of these paints into a cup, all the formulas, all the mixtures, um, because we'll just use that as an extender and that shouldn't be too much of an issue. This is really cool. So there's definitely egotistical on top of the uh, dioxazine violet here and a little bit over here as well. So we'll wait and see how this dries, but this is definitely a cloud pour. So it does work on a smaller scale, but it may just be a matter of it takes a little bit longer. So let's put that one down. <clears throat> so, so far, the Australian Flowtech, Flowtroll and Liquitex iridescent medium has just become a ring pour. The Flowtroll Australian and um, Vallejo pearl medium, same thing. So I actually might want to do that one again, just to see if it was because I added too much cloud mixture. So uh, let's continue on with the other paints that I have first, and then we'll come back to that one. So the next one I have is Australian Flow Troll and Flat Ceiling Paint. So this was the British Paints, I, I believe it's Low Sheen Flat Paint. Oh, sorry, it is, it's just flat based paint. So we're gonna see how this goes. And like I said before, reason being is that when we started doing blooms, people were using flat based paints and we're finding that it was eating all of their colors. So let's see if this is gonna have an effect on our cloud mix. So I'm gonna do just the Pebio iridescent red blue. And I'm only going to use the deep rose matter because I think the Australian red violet has too many bubbles in it 
and I don't like it. Again, not too much cloud mix. And let's see how we go. Now, it is important to drizzle down the side because that's when your cloud mix gets dispersed into your other paints. If you just drop it into the center, it's gonna mix with everything and you're not gonna get that striation. Now I think I didn't add enough cloud mix. <laughs> it's very hard to judge. Um, now I'm going to put the lid on the um, rust guard epoxy enamel because it's starting to smell really, really strong and I don't want to pass out. Um, let's give this a spin and see what we get. So I do get a cool effect. I'm gonna scrape this one and we're going to do it again. I'm going to add more cloud mix to it. This is the ceiling, uh, ceiling based flat ceiling paint Australian. I'm not going to be too pedantic about scraping it perfectly clean because we are going to pour again. So let's just grab our cup, some more of that. iridescent red blue let's do a little bit of the flat ceiling paint then I'm going to do the deep rose matter and then a little bit more of that ceiling paint Okay, let's give this a second go. Okay, definitely got more of that cloud mix in there this time, but still a little too much of the other colors. So I don't know if this is going to be an effective one. So let's have a look, give it a spin. And these may develop further. We know that. I hope they develop further. <laughs> So it is doing some interesting things. It's not very cloud-like, but I do want to visit this a little bit further. So I may want to do this on a bigger scale because it is forming something like clouds, I guess. So I'll give this one time to dry 
and see what happens. Next up is the um, H2O enamel. So this one I bought today and this is a British Paints product. So we're going to give this a try and see if this will work. All right, so let's put Pebio Iridescent Red Blue. Then I'm gonna try and layer this a little bit better. So let's do the H2O enamels. Drizzle that down the side. Then the deep rose matter. Then let's do a little bit more of the iridescent red blue. And I'm running out of paint, so I'm going to need to mix up more of this. Do a little bit more of the enamel. And more deep rose matter. So this one is a fully Australian based mixture. Okay, so we can get everything in this mixture at Bunnings. Um, I will use the Australian red violet here as my last color, just as an extender. So I know it's going to have bubbles in it. <clears throat> so let's pour this out and see where this goes. Awesome. Okay, so I'm already seeing the same reaction that happened with the Vallejo Pearl Medium. So this is promising. I don't want to say anything too too soon, but let's give it a spin. Now, I will make concessions and say that my technique is changing with each single pour, so they're not going to be 100% perfect, but we're looking to see if we get that reaction, and so far this one has given us the closest reaction. It's not quite perfect, but it's doing something, so I would like to test this on a bigger surface and see what it will actually do. because I'm starting to think that maybe it isn't so much the pearl medium or the satin enamels that's causing the reaction, but actually the US Floetrol. Okay, they're all mixed up, I'll wash that later. Now, far out. <sighs> Shit happens! So yep, all that paint I just mixed up, just spilled it on my table typical and you know why because I left this slippery so let's just wipe up the mess before we make any more of it now it should be good to go okay so we got chunkies but that's okay the next one I'm testing is Actually, I'm going to do the Dulux because this is one of the new paints I've bought. Let's have a look and see how this reacts. No, 
there are definitely chunks in here causing things to go weird. But let's just see how this goes. We're playing around, we're experimenting, we're seeing what's gonna happen. Now do I have any more paint here? I'm just gonna use some of this runoff paint. Oh. Whew. Dog scared the shit out of me, guys. Now, this is promising because I'm getting a really interesting effect. So, I want to try this one on a bigger scale as well as the H2O enamels. Although, I think I can see what Tiffany was talking about with the paint going grainy. However, I think that may be solved by adding some titanium white paint to it. Hmm. Definitely an interesting effect, but I can see that it's sort of separating and bleeding out into the paint next to it. We'll see how that dries. Okay, and then the last one I want to test, I don't think I want to test that epoxy. Um, we'll do that another day. But for now, let's test the plain old British Paints pillow paint. Definitely had better technique on that one. I've got lots of those fingerlings. Alrighty, let's have a look. I'm just gonna use some of this iridescent red, uh, red blue as an extender. Okay. Okay, this is promising because I am getting an effect and the effect is very similar to the Liquitex iridescent medium in the US flow troll. It's not quite the Vallejo pearl medium style of clouds, but it's definitely interesting. Now the Dulux paint that I bought, the sample pot, is also giving me an interesting result. So let's show you what we've got so far. So these will be very interesting to see how they dry because cloud pores can develop for some time after they've been poured. Okay, but let's summarize what we've got. Okay, you can pretty much see them all here. So we have the Australian flow troll ones here. This is the one with the Vallejo medium. Not happy with this at all, so I do want to redo that. This is with the Liquitex medium and it's just too thick. It looks like it's just a ring pour. Still pretty. This is the US Flow Troll with Liquitex and with Vallejo. Clearly the Vallejo Pearl Medium is the winner. Then we've got the 
uh, seal, flat sealing paint. Definitely need to redo this with better technique. I've got the water-based enamel. Again, need better technique, need to be able to control that white. This one is with the Australian pillow paint, the British Paints Low Sheen White. Um, this has given me a really interesting result with the edges sort of feathered out. And this is the one with the Dulux pillow paint. So again, just need better technique. So I'm gonna put these aside on my drying rack and I'm going to try a bigger pour with them. So I wanna try an eight inch round and I want to try the Dulux as my cloud mix first. So I'm just going to do this for now. I don't care if it's going to drip everywhere. And we're going to layer one of these cups. Actually, I know Tiffany says she prefers something with a wider mouth, so let's layer one of these. So I'm going to dump in the rest of this iridescent red blue. And then I'm going to dump in the deep rose matter. Then I'm going to mix things up a little bit here. Um, let me think. Let's go with the egotistical. This is mixed with US flow troll. So I'm just playing around at this point to see if that cloud mix is going to work. US flow troll with dioxazine violet from Triart. Now I'm going to put in the Dulux cloud medium or the cloud paint. So this is just Dulux sample pot in vivid white. dioxazine violet and then the quilla violet I'm going to put down the remaining quilla violet on here and the remaining diox violet on here as well just to use it up and act as a slick pillow. Okay, um, I don't actually think I've got enough paint in there, so let's do some. I'm just going to pour in the Decoite Extreme Sheen Gold 24 karat. Okay, so this is the result using the Dulux sample pot. It's quite cool. So we've definitely got an interesting, an interesting reaction going on and it's developing these beautiful cells over here. So I think this may be a winner, guys. Um, so I'm going to set this aside to dry. Let's see how this develops over the next couple of hours until it's dried. And we'll see if this is going to be a viable solution for us here in Australia for cloud pours. All right, I'm going to end it here because I'm starting to feel a little bit off. Um, but I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, hopefully we'll have some results. If you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.